Hello, everyone at Free Enterprise. Uh, sorry for the slight delay. We did have a small issue, not as big as the issue of the fact that you are stuck with me and none other than the Greenleaf Effect for the next, uh, well, however long these runners take. So, uh, TG, say hi to Invenerable and Pizza. Hi, Invenerable and Pizza. And Venerable uh, and Pizza, both working on their topping list right now. Uh, we do have a Rosa starch, which should be interesting. Um, oh, hey, never mind. It's all pineapple for and Venerable. Oh, yes. Putting pineapple on pizza. I love it. No, he's putting pineapple against pizza. Semantics. Now we do have a Wonder Woman Rosa start, which is very nice. Uh, interesting tidbit, uh, Rosa was our original starting character too before we had to re-roll the seed, so that's awesome as well. Yeah, 100%. And uh, to quote what they uh, said in the IRC beforehand is, what could possibly go wrong with a Rosa start? <laughs> Everything. I mean, if you ask me, they're just looking at the seed through rose colored glasses, but... By the way, if you were not um, already aware or worn, um, it is TG and I on uh, commentary, so... Uh, you'll probably uh, get sick of us before the end. Um, but... TG, uh... Let's see, we are going to uh, package up the red balloons. Are there 99 of them? Uh, only if one pops. Fair, fair. Uh, finding the tower key at the cannon location, that would be wonderful. I would very much appreciate that. Um, you, you especially, there. especially if you use it to lock yourself in. Wait, hold on. Are you saying I need to lock myself in? I mean, that would benefit all of us, but uh, we're going to punish Yang to the self-cave. Uh, I think we're going to punish everyone here tonight. Um, we're also going to be starting here. Um, so uh, we get the black screen and the fade in. Very dramatic. Very uh, Final Fantasy IV fashion. And, uh, oh, wow. We uh, we get our little uh, Zot group here with uh, Rosa and Kane. And not only that, we've got ourselves a twin harp, and um, I think that was poorly guarded. But that's just me. Possibly, but um, we we do need to tell our runners that since twin harp was the first item, that it is an obligatory check now. So we will be going to twin harp at some point. Um, if they do not, they fail the seed, and uh, they have to reroll once again. Yeah, so we've already had enough re-rolling, so hopefully we get at least one of them going there. In the meantime, we do have our objectives coming up here, and it's going to be Yang, Mount Ordeals, Odin, Return the Pan, and Drop the Magma Key. Yes, I read those all that fast. Uh, slight divergence to start out. Um, Pizza is going to uh, check out Chocobo Force, uh, get a Dragoon Gauntlet for his troubles, and uh, Inventables immediately heading up to uh, do a little raiding instead of uh, hanging around Baron. So what you're saying is that taking a quick little dip into the Chocobo Forge was working out good for pizza. Possibly. Um, but Baron Inn also has one of our objectives. There we have Odin seated, seated at the table with the kid. Well, I mean, that usually boss hunts are the hardest part of this, so finding the boss hunt early, you can't complain about that. Well, I mean, you can complain, but uh, having Odin at a very low HP spot is also a very, very nice. Uh, won't be an issue at all. Um, I, I would imagine that would be a pretty, pretty quick check for our runners there. I mean, it all depends on who's behind there, but uh, yeah. So we have Invenerable immediately heading over to Antline Cave to do a little diving while we have... Uh, pizza going ahead and checking out who the boss here is at the waterfall gate. Uh, we have a lunar sparkle here, so 
Oh, well, there, there it was. That is not what we call the postulized participation of the palindrome pasta. Uh, Ogopogo is not required this seat. Which is slightly disappointing because I'm always down for some good pasta puns. Yeah, I mean, the alliteration that we get just during the entire battle is great, and we don't get to experience that. So that is kind of disappointing. It is uh, very we disappointing. Have a lot of looting. We do have a lot of looting going on right now in Antline Cave and uh, a nice dancing dagger there. Yeah, I, I will say, though, the fact that we're not going to get Ogopogo, it's, it's deprived us of all the possibilities we have. We still have Leviathan. It, it, he may not be quite al dente, but uh, he's still good. Yeah, but Leviathan's just here because you get the movie deal going on, and then he misspelled his name. That's a story for Vanilla. Oh, wait, this is Daphne, so it's definitely Vanilla. Okay, we can get to that later. All right, so we got a Soma drop here early in Antlion's Cave, so we will see Tella at some point in this seed. I mean, and we, yes. And we'll finally get to see who is sitting down here in Antlion Cave, and we have none other than... Well... Hi, Mylon. So, we're gonna fall deep and We're gonna fall into a deep ravine after going down into a... Uh, cave. That, ma that makes sense, right? Uh, yeah, it makes total sense here. Uh, actually, a really nice boss to uh, find here. Uh, relatively simple. About the only annoying thing about him is all that extra text that you get from him telling you about the ravine that doesn't exist. Um, but, you know, the uh, Dancing Dacker from Pineapple uh, quickly takes him out, and we get a Tower Key. So, uh, That, that second objective that we had originally does not exist anymore. No, it does not exist, but uh, we, we can make it exist in our head. We can make it, we can make it canon thing. We can make it super canon there. That we can absolutely do. So the good news is, is that key was not the key that we needed to, uh, you know, open that aggro well. So our our dream of, you know, uselessly dropping the magma key into the aggro well is still alive. And that's what we always want when we see that objective. 100%. Hook to get underground, magma key underground, even better. Or hook to get underground, darkness crystal underground, magma key up on the moon somewhere. That's That's the dream. So, Invenerable also discovering uh, the uh, Nook Noodle. Uh, so, he will go ahead and just uh, decide to go elsewhere. Looks like he is going to be checking Mount Hops here, so we may potentially see a third character. We hope for a dupe because, well, that makes our runner suffer a little bit more. And we're all about the shot, right? But that is not the case. We got a little. Uh, that was a quake kit. Bit of well, D Lunars. I mean, I'm always down to see D Lunars. I lo I love seeing D Lunars. But but this is very disappointing because now we have Kane, Rosa, and a quake kid. Why is it disappointing? Because I mean. That's, that's actually a really nice team early on. I mean, fair. But just because the team is nice doesn't mean the seed is going to be nice. I mean, really what we're counting on right now is the pan or the magma key to be in a really, really horrible spot. Oh, got on Ogopogo, anybody? We keep wishing for that and we don't get it. I've seen it a couple times. So now that Invenerable has finished uh, recruiting the Quack Kid and uh, Pizza is doing the same, we are going to get a little bit of shopping from Invenerable, heading over here to Silveria, Mithril, whatever you choose to call it. Um, Silveria is a much better name. Although, speaking of, uh, you referred to it as the Quack Kid, let's be thankful that that was the animal chosen, because Palin would be a whole lot scarier if he was the Honk Kid.
Untitled Free Enterprise? Yes, yes, Untitled Free Enterprise game, yes. So nothing really happening here in town, so we're going to go ahead and get another check here. Uh, given the direction that Invenerable's going, uh, I'm not so certain that he will be doing for Blue Gauntlet. A lot of people fade for Blue Gauntlet until they get a little more uh, stuff, like either the pan or uh, a trip to the underworld or, you know, no other option. And considering that the pan is kind of doubly required here, I mean, you're at a it's, that's definitely a thing, and we got a little white chocobo catching action, so MP uh, gonna go ahead and be restored. And we did get a Lilith Rod there in that chocobo force, so that's actually wonderful for uh, Palum to sort of up his magic, let him do a little bit more damage. Here on Ordeals, you're gonna get three uh, bosses, so that definitely can help, especially if you get a boss that's very susceptible to one of those. Uh, level two magic spells. And I know Invin's gonna be very happy they're picking up that Aegis shield. Uh, watching him stream the other day, and I forget exactly what it defends against. He was hyping up the Aegis shield, like he is super happy to find it, and just, you know, the way the specific defenses work. So he's definitely happy to find that. And we get a Dark Elf, not the required music we want. No, but I'm sure he'll change your mind. Uh, that's just elementary, my dear Crimson. And we are uh, going to get um, French ish vanilla with some elements, including uh, Mylon Z here at the Mylon spot. I don't even think you can call this French ish vanilla. This is more like, you know toffee or coffee or something it's it's there it's a flavor you know but it's not really the flavor you were expecting okay it's neapolitan you get the vanilla but it's mixed with other stuff yeah but uh i don't like chocolate ice cream in my vanilla well that's okay it doesn't like you either wow that's where we're going well that escalated quickly and we do have plague here at the uh, Mylon Z back attack spot. And we and, have a reset. Yeah, Invenerable's gonna set up for that much better. Yep. Also, um, I, I, I'm pretty stubborn about some certain things, but uh, I'm adamant about what we just got in Kabul. Yes, uh... One of our original, uh, we won't reference the previous scene much, but uh, the forging was one of them. So uh, adamant still can be kind of nice in these seeds. If you get the adamant and legend sword early, uh, I like it because it's a free uh, cocoa check when you get underground. So uh, not too bad. Uh, Invenable did set up. He got into a random battle and purposely uh, knocked out Palum. So he could recover with a life spell uh, just to reset the counter and then, you know, use that Bacchus that he had on Kane to really just make this play quite trivial. I mean, I love the fact that the numbers are reversed. Uh, also, considering what we did get over there in Fabul, um, I guess we could call that a, a bolder play than in Venerable's maybe. No, no, we can't. Why can't we? Because it's just making the same play as in that, that, that That's fine, but, but going to Fabul like, when you did, that, that, that's bolder, right? No matter how you look at it, Teej, you're not going to be right. Eventually, I will convince you. I will grind you down. Well, Plague is doing the uh, I'm Nervous Shake and uh, slowly disappearing into the deeper being that uh, normally is susceptible to uh, the housing for Mylon Z. Um, my question is, is, you know, how exactly does Plague not catch himself and fly out of the ravine? 
That's a good question that I don't know the answer. I mean, maybe it's the one eye and a lack of depth perception. So he just thinks he has plenty of time and then uh, exactly. just hits. Okay, I, I, I can accept that. Well, that, that. That's fair. We have some more elements over on Pizza's side. And uh, we've got ourselves a crystal chamber. So let's see what we're going to That's not what you want to see. I mean, I mean, what you want to see. I mean, the seat's kind of getting explosive now. It really is, and uh, I mean, I don't want to, you know, spin around anything here, but uh, it's probably uh, not the best uh, item you want to see here, though. No, but uh, the enemy here is actually a really nice spot for uh, Val, even though we do have pain. Uh, well, you know, unless you have a kid trying to burn a tornado, that's not going to work too well. Neither is a dragoon trying to burn a tornado. Alright, so we do have pizza done with, or redoing the elements fight here. Um, and Venerable doing one-fourth of the elements fight here, so... We see the Lilith Rod being used as a spell item. I don't uh, disagree with that. I mean, it works. It does. It, it, it absolutely does. I mean, whatever, uh, whatever is going to work. I mean, it, it's a strat that, you know, it might blow you away there, but, you know, it's something. You're just blowing hot air now. That's all you're doing. You say that like you're surprised. No, I, I truly am not. Um, but now that Invenerable has completed Mount Ordeals and got his first objective out of the way, my my assumption is we will see him probably head over to uh, complete objective number three. Yeah, I mean, we're getting we're we're running low on item checks. I mean, we know that you're not getting anything uh, immediately useful from Fabul. Inven doesn't know that, but like you said, the uh, possibility of fading that is definitely high. So we go defeat Odin, figure out what we got there. And uh, from I know from our perspective, we want to see something that's not immediately useful, so we get used. I mean, that's the only uh, hopeful answer there. Um, so if, if we do get required music, what do you hope for here from Fabul? Or, I uh, mean, from Baron. Oh, from what? From Baron? Yes. Spoon. Spoon. Give me spoon. I I wouldn't mind seeing and seeing a very early crystal sword here, and then new Cecil. I mean, that that works too. That works too. Oh, by the way, Todd smells. Todd does smell extra extra. But what does he smell like? Paper. I thought you were going to say talk. So, in general, we're pulling out the big bomb here on Odin. Not the right weakness, but still enough damage. Sometimes it's all you need. I thought that was low. Well. It's only if you're looking for it in all the right places, although apparently uh, Odin was there because he forgot his luggage. Not a difficult fight, just, you know, Luge does definitely fall into that annoying enemy uh, set where any time you encounter them is an annoying time to encounter them because they're just obnoxious. Also, can we point out something? The fact that this is, a, this is in Ben doing this in the past two bosses uh, have all been bosses that would be vulner vulnerable to the Plunderclaw, and yes, it's Plunderclaw tonight because of what's going on, and we don't have a Yang or a Plunderclaw. Or even an Edge. I mean, yes, if you, if you want to do that. Also, as I said, very, very easy fight, uh, just if not just because of all the different attacks and 
everything else. Yeah, I mean, let's so, be honest, um, Dr. Luffy is a cutscene fight. I mean, there's one or two places he can be a little more obnoxious. I mean, that's the same for every boss. Well, not every boss. I mean, you find King Queen Neville in there, anywhere you're happy. I mean, yes, but, okay, most bosses. Okay, so, as of right now, as Pizza is done taking out Val and, uh, Lugay is down on Invenerable side. Uh, what other characters do you hope we get to? Um, besides, you know, the three that we already have. Oh, there's the hook. Oh, right the there's the hook. That's disappointing, game. I mean, we can hope that Invenerable, you know, even though he has a decent party and might get a decent character in Cave Evelyn, uh, we can hope that he may still do music for experience at this point. I I'm just trying. Well, I mean, there there is a chance that uh, if we see something crazy at Rubicante, uh, that uh, or even at King Queen Evelyn, that uh, we do get the the Twin Harp for the experience because, or the Magma Key check because uh, there are certain things you don't want to deal with them. There's a lot of things you don't want to deal with down there, um, but we are going to check here uh, to see what our Miss Cave boss is. And uh, we can't even peek at this, but you do have to wait for the battle to start. And oh. there is our gauntlet, so oh. rip the dream. I mean, we saw some larva there, but that bugged me. Yeah, we didn't have any alternatives. It, it, it was quite disappointing. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's a missed opportunity. And, and Ben using that as a sign and immediately going to Fabul. Yeah, I mean, so uh, this makes it so that uh, Pizza's play wasn't as bold as we thought it was. Indeed not. And that no longer allows you to use that pun going forward. Oh, you underestimate me, sir. No, I'm just hoping by me saying that the next time you use it, that is just mute you. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. So we do have a repeat of uh, bosses here. We have Pizza going ahead and getting his second objective, which is objective three, uh, using numbers as fun when it confuses people. And he will be doing his luggage set. And we have a Dark Dragon now on Invenable. So speaking of the luggage set, I have a question. When Dr. Lugay climbs up and pilots bomb up himself, does that go from having two duffel bags to having one bag on wheels? No. That is just, you know, when you see people walking through the uh, airport terminal with their uh, computer bag wrapped around their wheeled luggage. That's all they did. They got sick of carrying one, so they just strapped it to the other. Okay, okay, that's fair. That's fair. Or is it the obligatory when the kid is riding on the suitcase because they don't want to walk? I will not admit to having my son do that at one point in his life. <laughs> Most kids did that at one point. So we get some looting here from Invenerable, heading down through Fabul. A uh, few uh, edge swords. And then we get the hook over on Pizza's side. Yes, I, I would like to point out, considering we just saw uh, Ben get the same reward, that I am adamant that the boulder pun will come back. We're all in Forge Along Seed. <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, and we do have uh, some some uh, hovercraft now, and uh, we've got the park right in front of Evelyn Castle, so we may be seeing a little uh, looting here going on. We are getting a Kaipo check on Pizza's side, so a little more uh, divergence in routing right now. Uh, we're going to peek at who the character in the bed is, and San Ruby is going to rescue Sid. 
So we now know four of our seven characters. It's not a bad one to see. Although that is a very nice item there for Invenerable here in uh, Castle Eb Evelyn, uh, getting a Siren out of there. Never a bad thing to see a Siren, especially if you need to uh, figure out, a, a, not necessarily a, an early grind per se, but to get some levels uh, early, you're, you're always happy to see. And Venerable making the dive into Cave Evelyn. Always a nice check because there are also a lot of good items because this is a gated area. So I'll uh, see some pure threes here in the shop. Yeah, pizza getting the reset of the all gauntlet of Miss Dragon as well. Yeah, unfortunately, with these flags, all your items only selling for a quarter of the price. You're not going to get a lot of money out of uh, even selling a lot of stuff. So, uh, Invenerable did have to sort of limit himself on Cure 3. He's only purchasing 3. Pizza, you're checking out our Troya uh, shops and get some tents here, at least. A couple of Mew Bells and pick up a couple of Kamikazes. Um, that's interesting. Uh, kamikazes actually have a lot of use out of just like. Hold on, I need to interrupt damage. you. Yes. I need to interrupt you because we're getting music. Awesome. And, you know, our great Rich Dreamer Dathis will be doing his due diligence to uh, let us hear it. And we get um, a summoner being burnt by Leviathan. I mean, isn't that just, you know. No, no, we're not going to go there. We're not going to go there. So, did she run away from home and that was her punishment? I yeah. am not too certain about what's going on here. Yeah. Um, so, if, if you don't know the big deal about uh, Pizza currently going to check out Twin Harp, uh, one of our favorite things about this is that uh, Twin Harp doesn't give Twin Harp music anymore in free enterprise. It gives us a random uh, much improved uh, piece of music here when we uh, do our second half of the uh, Dark Elf fight. So when we get to that point, we are going to shut up um, the best, you know, one minute in this free stream, and uh, you will get to hear music, which makes that even better. Yep, so sit back, relax, grab your popcorn, and listen to the dulcet tones of DJ Spoonie Bar. Venerable's getting some uh, good checks here. Doing the reverse uh, uh, chest check and a uh, bunch of dancing daggers here in Cave Evelyn. So, I gave Evelyn's where the dance party was happening. Got it. Okay. So, we are at our Edward cutscene. So, uh, as he limps his way over to the harp, just reminding you that we are going to go. Uh, quiet here shortly, but it is not because Nathis muted us.
All right, and unfortunately for the rest of you, your solace is over. We are back, we are live, and we are talking. But uh, that was some music from Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, and we only have a Masamune behind it. So good news, you got music. Bad news, you get us again. Yeah, and that also means we uh, might not have Venerable ever check music, so you might only get it once. And Venerable getting a lot of good levels here from this Mad Ogre fight uh, took him a little while, but, I mean, it, it's, it's not a bad fight, and it's good experience, uh, especially heading down to this location with um, Leviathan waiting uh, for them. So, it should be interesting. Yeah, we also did see uh, some light pushing on those Mad Ogre so still getting up. Uh more than the game quote unquote intended you to get from that fight so yeah also notice that in venerable did not bother uh waking up Rydia. so my guess is probably setting her up eventually for a very nice uh slingshot reward meanwhile going to be using her temporarily as a very good anchor yeah i mean level one sitting there not gonna have high speed uh, Pete's going to be making the play down into the uh, Evelyn Cave as well. Going to pick up his summoner. And, uh, let's see what is at the King and Queen Eblon spot. Because we know we have Leviathan uh, behind that. But let's see what's waiting us in the Queen King spot. Well, that's a thing. That is 100% a thing. And uh, requiring a Demis is going to give us a second item check here. So that's always good. You're always happy to find this. No, you're not happy to find this when he's going to sit there and knock you out. I mean, I'm happy to find this. Because this means we might have to have more grinding. I mean, about the best thing about Demis um, in this situation is Demis hits you three times before misting, and you have four characters. So it is very possible to be able to keep your party up. Uh, maybe not heal the best, but they can at least stay up for most of it. And uh, you can slowly whittle away at Demis's health. Yeah, no, 100% that. Uh, yeah, this is not necessarily the best party for doing things like this, but we do have a virus palum at least, so that's going to be some good damage, as we just saw. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, taking down some of the characters you don't want to see, your, uh, your physical fighter as well as uh, your healer, your reviver, so... Uh, going to have to very uh, carefully consider inventory, especially if we start seeing life potions get low on Invenerable side. Yeah, Rosa definitely is the most important person to keep alive here because of the uh, life potion inventory. Um, so as you see here, we're going to revive our Quake Kid, who is more like a virus kid during this fight, because that's going to do the most damage we can. Yeah, also, uh, you won't see Invenerable healing. Uh, healing is absolutely useless. Uh, for the most part, maybe Uncane like he is going to set up here, but with the damage that Demis is doing, you're not going to be able to uh, salvage anything with any other party member, so might as well 
just allow them to uh, remain at low HP. Okay, and we have some dancing daggers being equipped and used here, so uh, we're trying to get in any little bits of damage that we can right now. Oof. Yeah, uh, we'll leave it to 10 HP Rydia to uh, save the party right now. I mean, I, I want you to think about this for a minute here. How horrible of a day Rydia is having here in the Evelyn Cave. First she gets into a fight with Dad and he shoots fire at her. Now she's getting into a, into a fight with Mom. Like, she's just having a day. Well, I, I, I'm pretty certain that uh, Pizza's Rydia is not going to have any much of a better day. So, uh, the last virus does take out Demist here for Invenerable. So, we'll, we'll be seeing a little bit of Leviathan. Luckily, we do have a, uh, a Lightning Caster. Uh, so, we will get some good damage against Leviathan. But, uh, should be a fun fight nonetheless. Nothing that Invenerable can't handle because, well, I mean, there's a reason he's the one seed, there's a reason he's the eight seed. They're both very good, very capable players. Uh, much better at playing this game than I am talking about it, even. <laughs> I mean, at least you've played this before. I mean, I've played it once, I think. I mean, the, the randomizer. I've watched enough to know what I'm talking about, or pretend like I know what I'm talking about. Getting free heal before Leviathan. And Rosa, yeah, Rosa having Zerk definitely helps uh, everything about this fight. And we do see the Starfail deployment here, uh, at least on Palom. And Rosa takes one as well, so we're going to be having uh, some viruses cast, uh, a lot of uh, spear throwing or smacking or whatever Kane's doing with the spear. And if he's poking? No, but he's not like lunging at four, he's sort of still doing that sword swing. So he's kind of like doing the, uh, like, He's like misting with the spear, like trying to get the fire on the Leviathan. Is that, what that, is that what's happening? I mean, I'm just taking it as like he's just trying to, uh, you know, just smack it and knock it out. I mean, if if it's a spear and I'm and I'm dealing with a snake type thing, I'm definitely stabbing at it. I don't know what he's doing at this point. Yeah, like I'm trying to like pin it to the ground, so it just sort of sits there and doesn't do anything. Like, I, I want to get as far away as possible. Yet another big wave, another uh, quarter of their HP gone, but uh, nothing too worrisome here. Uh, you know, able to keep the heals up and everything, so it, really the only bad part is just, you know, having to dwindle away that uh, HP. So it's, it's going to be a little bit. Yeah, I mean, and that's sort of like the big thing they're dealing with with a, with a lot of this right now is the fact that we've got four characters, we don't have a lot of damage output, you know, you know we, got, we got virus, it's really like the biggest thing we got, so. And really putting that Dancing Dagger to excellent use, making sure that uh, she takes a her uh, afternoon nap. Uh, an afternoon nap would have been great today. I mean, I'm sure no one would miss it if you went and just took a nap right now, as long as you, you know, turn your mic off for the snoring. Snoring? What are you implying, sir? I don't know. Um, but I do have a question for you. Who has the better pizza right now? Pineapple, 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 or basil, oregano, pepper, and sausage? Well, the answer is, is that black pepper or green pepper? Well, I mean, 
I would assume on pizza, that is green pepper. Then in this. If it was black pepper, I would go with, uh, with pizza. But uh, I'm not a green pepper fan, so... Although chat seems to think it's pepperoni, so... Ooh, banana peppers is also an option. Oh, wow. I'm torn on that because I hate peppers, but this is me and bananas. Demis down for pizza. Leviathan still being his... I don't want to say normal tanky self, but... He's being a tank. I mean, he, you could say he's being a little noodly. Don't twist my words. I, I didn't. I didn't twist anything you said. So, okay. So we have Leviathan and Leviathan. Uh, venerable with this slight Leviathan lead, but I mean, but I mean, I, I'm sure you have a whole lineup of puns here for this. I mean, all I'm gonna say is we've got Leviathan, but with as much as Kane is smacking with the fire spear, at what point does it become Leviathan burnt? He has the lotion. It's SP at 50. He's fine. Oh, but it's SP. He was, because he's gone now. I mean, nothing wrong with that. So we do finally make our way, and we have our underground access. Hey, I bet you didn't know that pitfall was there. What pitfall? Maybe it's a babble peak. Yes, we are. Red robes. Yay. So the imps um, overthrew Lugay and uh, went over, went up and took over the tower. So this is like minions too? Yay. <laughs> Yay. All right, so Invenerable does find out that there is a Falcon Underground that already has the drill attached and immediately goes back above ground. Uh, also, interesting note, over on Pizza side, we are bluffing up Palo, so we're looking to get a couple of big shots in with the magic there. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Uh, Palom is a good liar, and we're going to go see what Ridia's mom has. I hope it's nothing we need. I wonder if she, if Rydia's mom would scold the party for just letting her nap the entire time. I mean, it depends the type of mom she is. Oh, well, <laughs> the one that wants to burn her village down. Okay, wow. okay. You have to save and now switch to Rydia so she can burn the village. You, you absolutely have to do that. In Ben, it looks like we're not going to get that, though. Nope, that yeah, is a reset because that is a Palom. Number three. I would have at least seen what the sprite was. Invenerable, going to go ahead and check out who is laying in the Keiko bed. We know it is the engineer. I mean, by seeing this, is going to engineer a new route for him? No, not really. But he does find some life spells to replenish all the ones that he uh, did use up in that Demis fight. So we are going to probably do a little more shopping. Yes, we are going to go to Troy here and do a little more shopping before heading back underground. Or, you know, Invenerable might just treat us with some more music, we can all hope. 
I mean, you know chat wants that to be a thing, because that's another minute and a half they don't have to listen to us. Yeah, and I mean, on Pete's side, we're just, you know, stringing this battle out, so... We're, we're, it's gonna take a little bit, uh, for him. Uh, it's doing some nice damage there with, uh, in attempting to take Leviathan down, but as I said, the, the HP at this spot is pretty high, and when you're only doing, you know, 300 per hit with Kane, it, it's still gonna take a little while. Yeah, even with the, uh, the bluffed up power. I mean, 3,000 per hit is, is quite nice, though. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong at all. I mean, I guess you could say it's lit now. Only if Rydia was casting it. Nah, she's just still napping. I mean, wouldn't you be? You just, you know, fought your mother and now you're having a fight with dad? I mean, I'd be napping, too. Also, I love how the tent animation goes over the airship and leaves the drill poking out. Well, the tents are only so big. The they, 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 only, the they, only, they only fit five in an airship. Not five in an airship and a drill. Well, there's only four right now, so with only four, can they fit the drill? Maybe with a cabin. There's also star bales here, so not a bad... Uh, not a bad shop here at all in the Dwarfing Castle. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely a, a store. Cabins, Star Veils, I mean, that's a thing. Uh, there's an item that most people are wishing would be cast on us right now, a Mew Pell. Few uh, good items there on the way over, and a poison axe. So if we do indeed get that Sid, not a bad uh, item there to see. Hoping, praying that there was something, anything else to put on Kate. There was. I mean, he has to be burnt out with that flame spear by now. Well, I mean, with the Flame Spear and with Leviathan, were we setting fire to the rain? We don't need a Delphine. Why don't we? We do have some soldiers here uh, dancing around. We'll see uh, which variety it is. And there is four, so we have the Captain and his guards. So if that's the captain, are the three guards to kneel? Only if you want them to be. I mean, I'm down with it. So, uh, Quack Kid going to do his thing now that he does have Quake in his inventory. A uh, very quick takeout of the uh, three soldiers. Uh, I don't believe we're going to see an officer go down. We're just gonna see him run away. Absolutely, and unfortunately we don't have any, uh, I'm kind of hoping I, there's one character I want to see here because there's a pun I want to make, but it only works if there's one, one specific character. Uh, it is Magus Sisters, so probably not the character you were thinking of. Actually, and, that is uh, the character I was thinking of. Oh. Because uh, we had the officer, and now we've got a gentleman. Also, we, am I the only one who's Magus Sisters for that gentleman, Oh, look over on Pete's side, doing the Fey March check, and he's going to be rewarded with a gun gear, so Kane's going to lose that flame spear. But no, honest question, do the Mega Sisters bug you like they bug me? No, they don't. 
there is exit very very quickly um and a darkness crystal here in the fame marks yes there we have our moon access so the entire world is explorable now the question becomes where's the pan and where is the magma key My guess would either be uh, on the planet or on the moon. Well, we got a Bahamut and a wall sitting down in the fame marks. Hey, there's the magma key right there. Yes, so it was required a uh, hook to uh, uselessly toss the magma key into the well. So that will be another objective completed for Invenerable. We are just a pan away from go mode. are and I'm, I'm a little disappointed i mean i kind of like what pizza's doing here because i kind of want to see vanilla pan talking about a pan and vanilla not a one french toast mm. loaded with powdered sugar and maple syrup Yeah, it depends on my mood. However, um, we currently see in Venerable with a weaponless Cecil. Just a bunch of Dragoon armor and uh, an ice armor and yeah. Hoping for something for him here. How about an Ogre Axe? Well, that Ogre Axe is very nice. I mean, we all know in Venerable is firmly on Team Ogre Axe. Pizza but gonna I... go ahead and uh, looks like head over to do some of the uh, Earth Techs that he opened up with uh, both Demist and uh, Sheila, but does not have this Magma Key to turn in here at Agar. Nope, but we did get our job dwarf. He is an occupational therapist. And uh oh, uh oh, crap. Looks like Invent's gonna be putting that, uh, putting that siren to use. You know what that means. Everyone, hide your children. We're gonna yep. have egg puns. <laughs> we are gonna have so many egg puns. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm a little bedeviled about this. These aren't gonna go over easy with me. Oh, I'm gonna try my my, my best to uh, to make them work, whether I scramble your brains or not. And uh, we do have the package acquired here, and uh, at least Pizza is gonna give us what give the fans what they want, and that is Ridia opening the package. Uh, no, of course we're not gonna get the package opened, open, but she never opened it. <laughs> She slept through her birthday. No package opened. I mean, considering what that package is, it's a good thing. That's, that's the only time you want to sleep through your birthday. So I'm better we're gonna go ahead and run down the fame arch. I'm going to collect his darkness crystal down here, so maybe moon place uh soon in our future. I mean, do you moon first or do you go tower, you know, when it's dark him set, Dr. Lugan, and whatever's in the super cannon spot's gonna be basically free. I mean, yes, but... Ooh, well, there we have some, uh, chasing to do. Baron Key, there with Sheila. I mean, that's, uh, unfortunately, we don't need any more boss checks. That's just, uh, it's two items and a character, though. Yes, but, I mean... It, it all depends, really, where you, where you feel the need to go, because you're hunting one item. Well, I mean, Pizza's still hunting two until he does Dwarf Castle, but... For Inven, you're hunting one item, so 
you're going to be doing a lot of checks regardless. Yeah, I mean, I I hunt as many things as I can any checks as possible. You go grab the gang check here, and before you go out, the tower check is going to be basically very quick to do. Dark amps, you know, they're they're going to hit they're going to hit decently hard, but they're not a hard fight. Then you have whatever's at the uh, the super cannon. So, I mean, I don't think you leave here without doing the tower check. Also, we have an Ashura summon there, as we have a little bit of looting here in the Sylph game. And speaking of Sylph. Yeah, a uh, great find there in uh, Baron Passageways for Rydia. Yeah, so we, you're definitely happy to find that. Uh, super, you know, broken. I mean, the earlier you get that with Rydia, the better. But, you know, you're never mad to have it. Well, no. About the only uh, only time it's useless to have with her is at level 1 when she can't actually even cast it because she doesn't have enough MP. Uh, even though it doesn't use MP. What, 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 what? Yeah, she has to have enough MP to cast it, but when it casts, it doesn't actually utilize the MP. That's why it's broken. Yeah, no, no, no. Just the way you worded that was a what, 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 what? And I can't simplify things that much for you. Please do. Um... And then going to get his Baron key as well as uh, we're going to uh, figure out what the closely guarded secret here in Baron actually is. I mean, I never thought these guards did a good enough job at the Baron Inn, and now they're actually guarding the castle. I mean, this works well if we have Bygon on the throne. Does that mean Kinaz is going to be at Odin's spot? And Odin just got superiorly, uh... Odin demoted. got really upset, so... I mean, you know, Odin just got upset that he came back and there was a turtle sitting in his throne, so he decided, well, I'm not gonna move the turtle, so I'm gonna go have a beer. Well, Venerals gonna go, uh, find a whale. Well, that's, um, that's definitely something to spout about. Still trying to make a splash with your fun to argue. As much as oh my gosh, it is Bygan. Wow. <laughs> okay, now we just need the Odin check to see if it's King Azo. Yeah, and if that's the case, I'm gonna be by and I'm gonna go buy a lottery ticket. Also, you know uh, what? I will I will totally support you doing that immediately. I need to get out before all the stores close, so do it right away. Yeah, I figured you might be, but um, I mean, if that is Kena, so are we gonna let bygones be bygones here? I I can't. What can't you? I can't entertain that. So we do have Invenerable going to go ahead and check out who our moon character is. Do we see a sixth character? Or seventh character? Sixth seventh character. We know six of the seven. Who do we got? Who do we got? Who do we got? Drumroll, please, everybody. Hey, it's says Cecil. And it is Atella. I called that. You did. The Soma drop I mean, roofs for the Tella. Yes. But you I mean, know what this that has means? Been good. That means uh, we have a D-Machine grind option. Indeed we do. And he took Tella, so my guess is that's where that will be going very, very quickly. Dropping that curse ring on the sage, yeah. At this point, you get a Cecil, you get a Kane, you get an old man. I mean, definitely doing some D-Machine grind. Let's see what's waiting in the pot at the end of Baron Castle here. Are we rewarded with more than a Cecil? We are not. Just some Arden Zero, so uh, that play did not work out at all for pizza. Gonna have to head back underground at some point, but first we are going to definitely see if we have a turtle on the lower throne. I really, really want there to be the turtle here just to complete the circle.
There's a rune axe. Very, very good arbitrary uh, pot to check on the way down. Yep, come on. Come on, turtle. Oh, no. It's just, just the just Mylon dance. and friends. Yeah, just uh, four zombies in a trench coat. No, seriously, Mylon's wearing a trench coat. We do have the Baron check from Venerable as well. I'm not checking any of the chests going down, so he is going to miss out on the Gungir Spear. No, the uh, Gungir was in uh, self. This was the self summon. Oh yes, that's right. So getting uh, getting getting a little flexing there with that Grimoire. I'm not sure if this is the appropriate time to flex, but hey, to each their own. Here, flex, bro. So now, um, Mylon's just going to spend the rest of this uh, fight lighting up the sky, but his lit attacks do a good amount of damage here, so uh, a little more dangerous than most. Well, except on, you know, sausage. Apparently, you can't fry sausage. You absolutely can fry sausage. Because you have to cook sausage, you can't just zap it. Have you ever had sausage in the microwave? It's awful. But you take the time to fry sausage with, with fire, it'll be delicious. Yeah, but, I mean, apparently, zapping bacon is perfectly fine for this uh, seed. I mean, they do make microwavable bacon. It's, you know, it's passable. Also, I just totally realized that bacon give us bacon. Yes. Don't go bacon, my heart. Meanwhile, over on Invernable side, we just have pineapple, 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 pineapple. I mean, yes. There's nothing wrong with pineapple on pizza. No, but usually it's accompanied by ham or something. Yes, I mean, my preferred, uh, there's a little pizza place up here where I live that does little individual pies. My personal favorite is pepperoni bacon and pineapple. That's fine. Put some hot honey on there and it's perfect one day. Mmm, you're not wrong about that. And we get a Duke Cecil there for Invenerable. That just means more pineapple. Yeah, but you can't see that pineapple. Yeah. Also, uh, we have an Oh My Body over down, over down in the basement on pizza side. So the throne is down, and uh, we got some blink action. Yeah. Uh, Mylon likes to impersonate me. Um, an hourglass two for the reward. Uh, not actually horrible before doing the tower because now you do have that hourglass at your disposal for the dark ants if you so choose. Uh, seeing the other battles already that the hourglass would be useful in, probably not a bad place to use it there with the dark ants. I mean, it allows you to set up, uh, get some light glitches off if you want to do that. And uh, we're going to see a little bit of a high five here as we're going up and down the stairs. So uh, we're going to see Inven go ahead and, and take on Mylon as Pizza is going away. And not going to do the, uh, the obligatory, or uh, not obligatory, but uh, the check with the Rune Axe. But we got an Ogre Axe. We don't care. And Pizza is going to go ahead and launched the whale and may decide to go up and check and ultimately be rewarded for checking the moon character here. Uh, not very often that I would ever imagine saying being rewarded would tell it, but the guaranteed grind would be amazing at this point. Yeah, the only question is, uh, are we going to go D-Machines or are we going to go Mac Giants? Uh, you do D-Machines, Vitella. Only time you do Mac Giants is if you don't have a source of wheat. Plus, you don't really have anything that's going to be beneficial uh, 
against the Giants. I mean, I'm pretty sure most teams have things that are beneficial against the Giants. It's called a quarterback. We're really making football jokes now. I mean, someone's got him. Venerable continuing his mile and fight while Pizza is going to find out about the uh, the substitute old man in uh, in the Lunarian chamber. Yeah, I one of the weirdest things is uh, Tella. Depending on the clock since you're running, it's either, oh, no, it's Tella, or in this case, oh, hey, it's Tella, we're good. Okay, how appropriate though is it that uh, pizza made the old man a fungus? Well, all I was going to say is that, you know, you get Tella, I mean, he's a fun guy. I, I'm actually just pausing to read chat to see everyone groaning at that. What? And, if, and apparently Pizza is not doing the grind immediately. He is going to go ahead and dive some of the moon. This is one of those situations where uh, it could be huge or it could be ruh -ruh. Yeah, well remember, uh, this, this check makes a little bit more sense for Pizza than it would for Invenerable. Uh, only because Pizza still has two at-large key items required to beat the seed, whereas Inven only needs a camp. So Inven running up the tower to check the two KOs here is a lot better than, uh, you know, digging through longer fights for uh, the moon that Pizza's going to encounter. And we had encounters turned on over on Pizza's side. And yeah, it also wouldn't surprise me if Inven is uh, heavily grasping for 10 key items here. Well, I mean, yeah, if you can get 10 key items before going to do your D machine grind, even better. But you just got that hourglass from the Odin. Or, well, Inven reset out of it. He doesn't Odin. have the hourglass. Oh, okay. Never mind. I did not see the reset out, but. That would have made this fight easier, but still not going to be too difficult there for Invenerable. Also, uh, I always thought this playing the vanilla game about Dr. Luge dancing around there. Like, would that not be the last place you would dance around? Is at the very top of the bottom part of the tower with that big pit rig by you? I mean, yeah, that's definitely kind of a scary thing, although we do have a King Ryu fight over here, and uh, that is where Pizza's going to put his hourglass to you, so we're still going to get a little bit of a King Ryu grind instead of a D machine to start off. I mean, having the weak still makes this very, very nice. Uh, going to be able to set up the life, life glitch here. Um, at least I believe. At least yeah. up here, we're going to get the life off on the King Ryu. Um, trying for a double life glitch, but not going to get it. But that is still going to be 90,000 uh, experience, which will do a lot of nice things for his levels. Yeah, now the question becomes is, do you kill anybody off here to set up a slingshot? Uh, I mean, he's not really set up for slingshotting anyone. His Rydia, or he got rid of his Rydia, which would have been really the big uh, benefactor to a slingshot. Um, and we do get a Sand Ruby, so Sid is available for Invenerable. Not uh, quite certain that he will go that route. Although having the Artemis Arrows and an Elven Bow is not the worst for Sid. Also, I'm not sure if you caught that. Rosa rolled one damage on that King Ryu. The Weak also rolled him down to one damage. <laughs> hey, whatever works. Um, it is also nine key items here for Invenerable, so possible 10 here at the uh, tower spot. So we'll see what the supercomputer gives him. And it does give him a uh, Lunarian boss. So we're either going to see... Or no. It has to... No, it's either Wyvern or Pale Doom. It's the Wyvern. It is 
There's the star bales, so. I'm able to get one off, so Wyvern is going to go ahead and, well, you know. Yeah, <laughs> or you can just do that. Rose is just going to laugh. So Wyvern just decides to make a new to the supercomputer. I mean, probably the most effective Mega Nuke we've seen from Wyvern in a while. No, you haven't watched me play then. There's been a lot of super effective Mega Nukes against me. Oh no, I, I, I've, I've, I've watched you play, definitely. So we will see what the Tower Key gives us for Invenerable while uh, Pizza is setting his party up for, I believe, probably the Ribbon Fight to start off just because of the a possibility for two key items there. Gotta go ahead and put that rune axe on for bacon. Kind of not uh, accurate though, because bacon runes nothing. That's true. Kane running away from the exploding bridge. Yeah, and the Rubicante there in that spot, that's going to be fun. And unfortunately for uh, Inven, not a 10th key item, just another edge sword. And we do know uh, there is no edge here. Yeah, I know, I know, it's pretty dull. Oh, Invenerable is going to give us some music. Which the chat is happy about, less because of the music and more because we're going to be quiet again. Although, imagine Invenerable's reaction when he gets another, the other Ed Sword here at yeah. Twin Heart. Yeah, it's going to be one of those things where you're just like a, really? Also, unfortunately, uh, Palom and uh, Rubicante decided to have a stare down. Rubicante won. Well, I, I do think that uh, Rubicante uh, does have a glaring advantage over uh, Quick Hit. Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong there. Alright, so, uh, that's where Kamikaze's coming useful. Yep, and, uh, we got some, uh, some kabooms happening. And, uh, this is the part where we let you get a rehash of some Mystic Quest. And, uh, we're gonna go ahead, put our feet up, relax, and grab some popcorn. Much quicker fight here for Invenerable, and uh, while that was happening, uh, Pizza was left in the oven a little bit too long with Rubicante and did get burnt, so 
did have to reset out and uh, was rewarded with a pre-fight here at the White Spear Altar. <laughs> you could just hear the disdain in that reset for Invent. I mean, I heard him hit the button. Yeah, like, you could just, you could feel that. And it looks like Invent is finally going to make the run up to the moon. All other checks are uh, exhausted, so... Not all of them, they're still king and queen uh, of the Fey March. And well, it is just yes. Bahamut at the Leviathan spot, so Star Veils are for sale, so I mean, just saying. Well, we're gonna check the other Bahamut. Ooh, you we know, get all the value paid. You're not mad at that item. It's not a key item over there on Pizza Seat, but you're no, not mad that, at that. No, that's, that's a very good item. Uh, given the two characters that you have, uh, with Cecil and uh, Kane, uh, you never mind seeing an Avenger at all. Also, um, if, if I'm not mistaken, we, we did see Rivers in chats. So we know there's not going to be value here. Oh, of course. There's our but turtle. There's our turtle. I'm disappointed that he's up here, you know, hanging out with the with the king of the monsters as opposed to the king of the humans down there. It's a little shellfish, wouldn't you say? No, that's selfish. Dark Knight deciding, hey, I'm gonna go to a spot where I get a lot of power. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Doesn't even give the opportunity for uh, Pain Man to uh, finish his party off. He's gonna do it for him. I mean, if you're gonna have Pain Man dealing, uh, dealing that much pain, you probably better bring some aspirin. Although we may be seeing some uh, push B to jump to avoid that strat. Let's see if we can get Kane in the air and, jump and keep him up there. Double checking to make sure he doesn't have that Avenger on Cecil. Yeah, that that would be a very very bad uh, result to the battle. That would never, fall. it would end quickly just in the wrong yeah, way. Yeah, just in the wrong way, absolutely. So uh, we have uh, Thor Rage is happening over on uh, Invenerable side because the Lit scared him. Getting a Cure 3 off on Kane, that is actually going to put him in a decent situation. But unfortunately, not enough. Uh, unable to get that last Cure off, and Kane is not going to survive. Nope, unfortunately not. Uh, we are still gathering the water over on uh, Invenerable side. This is not a, a, a fun spot to be in. Especially having only uh, Kainat, I mean, only Kainat. So, yeah, we've, we've got Kainatso in the party, everybody. I meant to say having only Cecil and Rosa, but we've revived Kane, as I was saying, that was why the Kainatso came from. Yeah, well, uh, Kane not so uh, lucky to stay up with that wave. Uh, still doing a lot of damage with wave right now, so uh, his HP has not dwindled too much. All right, we've got the first Cure 3 happening with Rosa over there. Uh, we just have to get Kane above where he needs to be. We're good. I mean, both Kane and Cecil are set up for surviving that second one. It's getting that third one off and uh, doesn't look like it's going to be enough. No, it will not. No, you definitely need to. Did something a little more, a little more oomph in it, you know. That's uh, that's the uh, the slow acting aspirin. We need the fast release. Venerable slowly uh, dwindling away at the uh, at the health of Kinazo, but uh, he's just tough shell to crack, so.
Yeah, uh, uh, this is an interesting uh, setup over here, though, because uh, usually when you have a Cecil or a Kane, they're the ones being swept. No, no, no. Rose is the one bad right now. Cecil barely hanging on there. Um, might have that might have been a reset if if he wasn't able to hang on because I'm not so sure Rosa would have done enough damage to take out Kinazo before uh, taking too much damage. So yeah, but uh, then we do have uh, Pain Man going down over on the right hand side of the screen, and Oregano and Bacon gonna level up to their uh, much more powerful form, which is. Uh, fresh and crispy, respectively. And a pink tail as a reward, so uh, not required by any means, not any progression, but uh, maybe a decent item? I mean, I mean... Let's face it, we have Cecil, it's probably Crystal Solar. Yeah, or it's going to be like another Masamune. I mean, at this point, do you think Kainatsu is uh, is having fun doing this just for the shell of it? At this point, like, all puns aside, I'm just wondering when it will be over. Like, the, the battle it just, it drags on for so long, and it's very annoying. Yeah, the interesting thing is, is gonna be is can Invenerable do enough damage to race the the shell healing? Yeah, with with what Rosa is doing, I, I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. Uh, getting some jumps in from Kane as well, uh, and able to the biggest thing is able to get uh, all of this party back up. So we'll be able to cast an Ice Three or something with uh, or Ice Two with Palom, and that should be enough to put him over the cap. Ooh. This is not something you want to see at the Wyvern Altar. No, um... We're going to be doing a lot of blinking here. Yes, we are. So do not adjust your sets or your eyes. There are going to be multiple copies of uh, multiple people there because, uh... Yeah, it's an antline. Okay, Nazo finally does go down there. Uh, good amount of experience, able to get some extra uh, levels onto our characters and, you know, some good things like wall. But not an item you really want to see. Nope, like you said, we had a river, so no value. I mean, that's value for us. Well, yes, it's definitely value for us. I mean, we just got to sit there for about six, seven minutes and make turtle puns for an elven bow. I guess you could say that uh, we got strung along a little bit. I know, I know, you're quivering with excitement on that one. No, I'm just not responding to it because I am the please. <laughs> So Invenerable making the run into uh, the moon. Do we see Invenerable start at the top of the subterrain with the Pale Dump spot, or does he dive to the ribbon area as well? Wow, that one shot. Yeah. Antline, obviously not quicken in his boots, takes out Quick Hit after taking the uh, nice shot there. And we do have the Pyotum check, and it is a bunch of dancing dolls. You know, I'm, I'm trying to think, I, I got nothing here. I, I think I dolled out all my punts already. 
you can only be so lucky. I mean, yeah. Better mode trying to uh, run buffer enough to avoid uh, the last cow from becoming Calbrana and is able to do so. So the dolls are taken out. And what will we get? Just a helmet. Hey, I'm jumping all over that one now. I'm glad somebody is. I mean, this is just putting uh, Bahamut and Evil Wall down in Bay March, uh, becoming spicier and spicier. Uh, I have a heated argument for you, though. I, I think Rubiconte can still uh, turn out a lot of goods. He's been glaring at you, hasn't he? It's that leg. I mean, yes, uh, it is that leg. Hashtag that leg, everybody. Antline does go down for pizza, and we get. Well, that's the wrong event. I mean, I would, I would pay someone to eat pizza with a spoon. I would enjoy. Actually, no, that would be disgusting. I would not enjoy watching that one day. Let's say how much you offering. <laughs> It looks like pizza gonna heal up. Is he going to stick around and go ahead and check out those dolls, or uh, is he going to head back down to Earth and maybe do a play at the uh, Fame March? Looks like he's going back in. I mean, you've already got you know uh, three of the five really. You know, Rubicante is uh, at the ribbon spot with our two key items. Uh, you're slightly more powerful than you were the first time you tried that, considering you know you got a bunch of the experience, free experience that Venable's going to give you. You still have the uh, pale dim spot, which we know is the cows and the brainas. So, I mean, are the cows and the brainas are they like the sharks and the jets? No, they're not facing each other. True. Though. I might enjoy the Cal Brandon music a little bit more if they put it in the West Side Story fashion. It's when you're a cow, you're a cow, and I'm gonna stop right there. Well, thank you. Because the only other song I know from West Side Story is I don't think is one I don't think anybody wants to hear me sing. I know I don't, and I'm betting Daph is one neither, so probably you get no. quickly muted. Yep. Speaking of Dathis, uh, shout outs to both him and uh, Baka for not only restreaming and tracking, but also putting up with us. Mostly putting up with us. We have some conscious royalty on Invenerable side. That fight has been free for free free. Free, free for free. Free for free free. Also, we have a uh, chat putting up the lyrics to that. We've got somebody else referencing guys and dolls. And I think by default, I have to sing because Scala Kitty is telling me to sing. You can sing for Scala later. But it's Scala, and I don't want to disappoint. If you sing, you're going to disappoint even more, so. Yes, but I'd rather disappoint you than Scala. All right, so we are going to get the Ruby matchup here on the Venerable side. While apparently the dancing dolls are not dancing, it is only Tella and Pal. And yeah, okay, that was a quick Ruby check. Pretty sure we prefer Sapphire here. Going to go ahead and probably a Vendor glitch into this uh, just to or maybe even not, uh, depending on how he chooses to go about it, uh, just to get that little bit of extra damage from the Blizzard Spear. Uh, unfortunately, just the Dragoon Helmet over there. We do have some Berserk happening on the Rubicante fight. 
uh, Berserking Cane, of course, with that Blizzard Spear. Yeah, yeah, that 4,500 damage is quite a bit more than Pizza was able to do. Uh, Pizza is done with the moon for now. Um, may go over and, yep, is going to go over and check how you cave. Uh, Inventable is just demolishing the Conte right now. But again, hashtag that leg, y'all. I mean, even with all this damage, it's not like Ruby Conde's uh, walk in the park, although he takes out the correct character there with the glare. Uh, he says, lay down, old man, and uh, continues to go about his merry way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're always happy when, when the boss cooperates and does that. And uh, hey, Krim, I think we might get to make more turtle puns. And, and, and yes, uh, chat 100% correct with Rubicante, not the elemental fiend of fire, the elemental fiend of leg. Was it leg? Oh no. Oh no. We do have two of our element fiends uh, being caught right now. Rupakante is going to return and uh, telling us all good luck. I'm pretty sure he's counting on us all, but... And we get the nice uh, Cure 4 there on Rosa as well. And, Earth uh, Crystal. Yes! So, that is a chain. Ooh, boy. Also, More importantly, ten that, yeah, that's 10 key items there for uh, invenerable. So, uh, before falling down any more rabbit holes, do we see our grind? I mean, if we're talking about rabbit holes, I couldn't care at all. I'm late for a very important date, which is not listening to you. Wow, that's how we're gonna play? Yes. Also, um, I would say for pizza right now, his best bet would be that Pan is behind one of the Fae March bosses, because there's a high probability that he will fade uh, Rubiconte until the very end at this point, um, whereas Venerable may chase that Earth Crystal first. It's one of those things where you're just like, mm, I'm going to put the Blizzard Spear back on Kane because, again, we don't want the Avenger there. Alright, so we're going to get a little more pain on Invenable side while, uh, yeah, it, it's a slow turtle fight. I mean, yeah. The joke writes itself. It really does. Also, can I say how much I appreciate the fact that uh, the uh, Ice 3 animation is basically, you know, icicles falling, which in a cave just look like looks like stalactites falling, which is a nice little touch there. It's appropriate. Also, getting the life off to bring Palom back to gain the experience as well. Very nice there on the vulnerable side. And someday you will see. I don't like that he will that he never tells me what I'm gonna see. You gotta open your eyes. So he's been making the small walk and now gets to warp his way out of here. At, at least a few screens because he's going to check the wyvern spot and uh, get met by an antline. 
Yeah, um, the Kainatsu fight went much better for Pizza than it did for Inben. Uh, again, a situation where the, the little bit of extra levels help and getting some flakes off and dropping lots of ice there. And unfortunately, uh, getting the bad news that the, the turtle just started him along. And Pizza making the right, not necessarily the right call, but making the call to go back to go after more lag. And uh, is at least going to be rewarded with the Earth Crystal. Yeah, unfortunately, that's a long check for this one item. Um, which, if, if I'm either runner with the levels that I'll be carrying down, especially knowing Bahamut's one of the enemies, I would be probably making the pretty much play first for uh, doing Earth Crystal. Even though the Earth Crystal is a lot easier, um, you know, two key items in the same area compared to one key item after a long check is, is quite different. Yeah, and considering that you need to go smack Yang with the pan anyway, uh, being down there to do it, you know, is definitely where you want to be at. And let's not forget that Pizza still does have to do the Dwarven Castle uh, fights to get the Magma Peak. Still has not done that yet. And Venerable just has to turn it in. Or uh, drop it down to Hall. Yeah. Dropping the Magma Peak down the already open hole is uh, definitely one of the nicer touches. And you ain't lying. So that's the one that gets the uh, the eternal silence. Okay, good to know. However, uh, we are going to continue with this antlion uh, blinking contest. Uh, I, I see. I want to say Invenerable loses because he blinked first, but normally that make, means you win. And we get more leg. <laughs> we do get more leg, all right. Uh, ha hashtag more leg, everybody. Hey, look, Antline's uh, helping out too, taking Tella down. I'm helping! And the buyer's taking Antlion out, so Venerable going to learn the uh, reward here at the Crystal Altar. And just say the wrong uh, kitchen gadget. Is a spoon really a gadget, though? Yes. It, it totally is a gadget. Okay, how is it a gadget? Uh, you would not imagine how many times I've used a kitchen spoon to fix things. But that's not a gadget, it's a tool. What's the difference? I'm trying to think of one, and then I just wouldn't refer to a spoon as a gadget. Like, usually to me, gadgets have moving parts. I'm sorry, Inspector Gadget had a Spoon as part of him, so it is a gadget. Really, that's your, that's your logic? You're Inspector Gadgeting me? It is solid logic. It's, it's, it's something. It's something. Uh, but yeah, we are making our way back down into the land of summoned monsters. Uh, so did we see Bahamut first, or do we see uh, Evil Wall first? Bahamut. You go with the, the easier fight. Ooh, 
Ooh, setting up for some cover strats. Okay. Maybe seeing the wall first. <laughs> Although, not it really matters because Bahamut's just a, a set wall and wait. But yeah, Rubicante still uh, being an absolute pain here for uh, for pizza. Yeah, it looks like we're getting ourselves some wall. That's twice now the timing has been off on the ice three for pizza, and yeah, gonna unfortunately have to hit the uh, the reset there because uh, Rubicante. Uh, unfortunately, getting the better off, but that, that is a good thing for us. You know why it's a good thing for us, Crip? More lag. Hashtag more lag. <laughs> also, uh, a adventure team just going off on this evil wall. Um, and, and Cecil going to uh, guard and avoid every, every shot from the evil wall, so... Yeah, not going to be uh, difficult for him to at all. No, no, no. I mean, when Cecil's dodging every attack, he can't complain. Also, seeing those icicles drop from the ceiling on an evil wall fight, anyone else getting Final Fantasy VII flashbacks? Please, this was before Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII gives me evil wall flashbacks. I was never a SNES baby, so I played VII first. And down goes the wall. Uh, let's see what we get from uh, getting our pickaxes to that wall. That's a rat tail. That's another uh, chain item. So is Bahamut going to have what we need? Well, either way, we're going to save first, and then we'll go check it out. Yeah, we're going to save. We'll you know check Bahamut, and then if Bahamut doesn't have anything, we'll hightail it out of there. Or we'll just hightail it out now. Actually, I like this from Inven. Go check the Rat Tail. If Rat Tail doesn't have anything, you just have a you now have a save in the Fame March where you can immediately go back. Yeah, no, this is uh, this is uh, a very very smart play by Inven. Obligatory. That's why he's the number one seed. Comment. Always. We also might see what we get from the pink tail too. I mean, you're here. You might as well. If you get rewarded with a with a uh, with a crystal sword, you're, you're super happy. Well, you're that's, not gonna reset out of that. That's value. Yep. You're not gonna reset out of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he reset out of that. Yep, but how many edge swords was that? <laughs> he reset out because he knows as soon as he finds the pan that he can always just easily go back and grab that yeah. He knows where it is, so that's not a time sink. No, not at all. But and, I did and, call the pink tail being another massive move. Just saying. And you know what? I totally agree with Anger resetting out of that reward for pink tail. Okay. So, uh, we learn how to count with Bahamut. I mean, he, and, he's on the call, so he's going very slow with the counting. Yep. Uh, I mean, and, you know, considering, you know, the, the state of everything, you know, learning how to count is something we all eventually are going to have to do, whether it's with Bahamut or, or not. Hey, there's still leg over on uh, pizza side. I mean, I'm all for more leg.
Teller doing his best to get walls up on people so uh, Bahamut can make a new everyone and take out him and Teller. Whatever works. I mean, ideal strats there. You can't complain about it. Well, I'm sure you can complain about it, but... Hey, we got to two. We did get to two. Okay, uh, Rubicante is still glaring down, uh, Palamon. Palamon has to learn to be better at staring contests. And the third rabbit hole item there on Bahamut. So now, which do you check? You check Lugiki, because if it's not what you need, you can reset out. Yeah, absolutely. And you're already down here. Yeah. Palom again gets into the staring contest and still drops the healing on Rubicante. And then Rubicante's like, no, 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 no. See, thank you, thank you for the massage. Now have more leg. Okay, so here's an interesting one for you, uh, TG. Um, and I know that what play I would make, and I know that I'll probably, you know, be told, you know, that's not the right play. But what do you do if you get Light and Sword here at the back of Luka? I check the boss. If it's Water Hag, I keep it. Otherwise, I reset out. Because you have a pretty stacked team, already as is. And there's really nothing at the Coco Shop that could be worth the time sink right now. So unless it's Water Hag, I, I think you reset out. I mean, that Excalibur is always very tempting. Right. Yeah, I mean, at this point, Luke he has to lead to either Legend Sword or Pain. There's the pan, so we're gonna require a boss here. We are, um, are we gonna get some haha? -ha? I mean, that would be perfect. It would be. Nope, what we get instead is orb. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set up for that fight now. So Teej, all this uh, moon checking. Yeah. I guess it was good for the levels. Yeah, I mean, uh, unfortunately we got a little dark side of the moon here. So we are going to go ahead and... Uh, Play some baseball here. Uh, not advised with one HP on most of your party because uh, cover doesn't do anything. Okay, uh, here we go. I'm gonna take out the uh, one of the small orbs first, then the big orb, then another small orb, and it's all gonna be good. Oh my gosh, I love that strat. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to avoid the globe. Blinking the attacker because of the Avenger sword. That's fantastic.
So yeah, since we've seen everything else, I mean, Invenerable is pretty much 16 out of 17 to the seed. That means that Earth Crystal would lead to the uh, Legend Sword. So we're not we're not going to be seeing Excal at all. Also, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to point out that uh, as much as we have enjoyed it, we are getting no more like this seed as Pizza has taken down the Rubicante and has gotten the Earth Crystal. After all the trouble we've had with that fight, you got to imagine Pizza's going Earth Crystal here, right? If you're metting, probably, because you figure that's a very difficult uh, boss and your opponent still hasn't got done. So, uh, you, you feel that that may be the play for Pan. Also, we did get some bluffing happening. Unfortunately, now we just have an angry CPU, so we're going to see some Globe 190R. Oh, no, no, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> Crazy Kane made sure we didn't. And yeah, there is Pizza going with the Earth Crystal check. And uh, we have ourselves a pan. Uh, Invenerable just has to go smack a monk, return a pan, drop a key, pick up a pass. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't even think of that. Invenable still may be able to get the Legend Sword because I forgot about the two key items you get from the Pan Smack. Yeah, so not necessarily at Earth. Of course, we'll probably see Legend Sword from the Silk Fairy and then a Crystal Sword from Sheila. Oh, yeah. And Venerable uh, warped his way out of the Luffy cave and is going to immediately wake up a monk. One of my favorite sound effects in this game. Not my oh, favorite. Oh, there's haha. Ha ha ha. My favorite sound effect in this game is unfortunately one we don't see in the randomizer. It's Horum thwacking Palum upside the head. Which I'm pretty sure you've been wanting to do to me this entire time. I would love if Ward could somehow work that back into the randomizer. Yeah, it would be fantastic. The question is, what did we get from the Soul Fairy? Another edge sword. <laughs> Another edge sword. <laughs> So the first question we're going to have to ask him, Venerable, after this is if he knew Edge was in the seed. <laughs> Just see, see if we can play that into his mind. Uh, I mean, if you want to do that, I'm not going to stop you, but... Ooh. Well, that was a waste. Objector complete. Yep, and now we're going to go ahead and return the pan. Probably pick ourselves up a pass while we're at it. Yep. I know we're going to pick ourselves up a crystal. We are. Uh, we're also going to potentially get a crystal sword. I mean, you hope. I mean, if you're going to keep some ingredients up over there on HaHa, -ha, sausage and oregano is not a bad combination to have. Also, I mean, we're going to get another edge sort of pan, aren't we? Either that, or maybe like a, the ninja garb or something. Yeah, just to rub it in a little more. And 
All objectives complete. So, Sheila holding two crystals for us tonight. And there's the legend sword. Go ahead. Yay, 17 Go out ahead. of 17. And 17 out of 17. At least we will learn what is at the Earth Crystal, though. Yes, we will. It's going to be another edge sword. Golbez does not get the last laugh. Does go down to pizza. So we will see who our two new characters are. Another Rosa. Yep. And uh, what is with all the characters just progressing up the ranks? I know, right? <laughs> but I guess now we do have one more big question that we need to ask, Krim. All right. Well, uh, there, there's one boss that never moves around in this seed, and and that's Zeramis. So. Since we can't move him, we change him. So the big question is, is whose butt are we kicking tonight? I mean, I haven't seen a particular person, so Altros is on the table. Always. I mean, my personal favorite one I've seen so far is I was a big fan of the Zeroma HD which is just the PSP sprite. I mean, I do believe a new favorite of everyone is um, Temp Job Miss. Temp Job was good. Hummus was good. But we will see shortly. We also got Ashura in the Tower of Zoth, but uh, here we go. We have got the crystal coming up. Tella doing his... Uh, Obligatory anchoring job and time to see the butt. We are kidding. Can we get Legmus? Can we get Legmus, please? I need to win a tournament now so I can ask Kala to do Legmus. Well, that is Nightmare Miss. A little Kirby yeah. action there. Yes, Night Miss 2. Electric Boogaloo. Always, always a fan of uh, Kirby. Yes. So, we don't have the Star Rod. Or, well, the Star Dust Rod. Rod. A Moon Veil was our prize. So, we, we were just left with four Edge Swords. Yes. I mean, it does pretty much limit the, the places that pizza can check. Got dwarf and, um, well, Fey March. So it looks like we are spinning our way to Fey March first. Yeah, not a bad decision here. Um, also, can I say it is extremely appropriate for Nightmas to shake, considering he does it so much in the Curry game? You're not wrong there. But first you draw a circle, right? And the Big Bang does, uh, kick down Tella. Tella did his job. Oh, absolutely. He got the crystal off. Exactly. And he's, uh, he's protecting us from the horrible terrors of the ground. I mean, to be fair, if you're laying down face down, you're still getting pretty good scenery. I mean, here, yes. And uh, we're going to get the far. Warhol fight first for pizza. Yeah, did not set up the cover straps like Venerable did. Um, 
So it's just gonna have to hope for a lot of damage output here. And not from the evil wall. But say so you gotta be a little bit specific there, friend. Also, the more I see Nightmares too, like first of all, the sprite's amazing, but can we can we talk for a minute about that chin? Like, this has been Body Parts Day here at uh, Free Enterprise because we had hashtag leg, hashtag more leg, and now we've got hashtag chin happening over here. I mean, the nose competes with it, let's face it. The nose does compete. Oh my gosh, chat's right, it's Jay Leno. But yeah, I mean, I'm not sure, is, is this really Night Miss, or is it Chin Miss, or maybe Nose Miss? We'll file an official uh, petition with uh, the City and Council uh, to change his name. I mean, you know what they're going to do, they're just going to see it and look at, oh yeah, no, that wasn't filed on the proper form, so just dismiss it anyway. Evil Wall does go down pretty fast for pizza there, so... Uh, Tella the only one taking the nap, which is no harm done. Rat Tail, is he going to check Bahamut before chasing that rat? Or he could do like uh, Inven did, save and then just cheese it. Nope, immediately to Bahamut. Gonna drop some Berserks down, and again, we get, we get to learn how to count with Bahamut. So for Invenerable, this is the fight is just a slow and steady fight, uh, you know, keeping your health up as much as possible and, you know, just waiting for Cecil and Kane to dwindle his HP down. Um, because you're not getting damage output from a bunch of characters or higher damage output that you would normally get, you may see one or two more big bangs. But other than that, yeah, we're in media phase here for Invenerable, so uh, there's your boulders. No, I made that joke earlier. And we got our flash, we got our shake, and we got Invenerable winning this first matchup here. With an official astronaut time of 2 hours and 32 seconds. We also have an Invenerable in the chat with us. Hey, everyone. Why, hello. GG. GG. Thank you. Uh, hashtag blame Dathus, right? That's the that's the new saying? No, or, no, no. We are hashtag. totally blaming you because this was re-roll. Yep. Oh, yeah. The internet hiccup at the yeah. start. Like, uh -huh. I, uh, I am notoriously paranoid whenever anyone in a race has readied up you know, when we still have like five minutes to spare. And then you get down to like the one minute mark and I'm like, ping, anyone there? Uh, have, have I have I lagged out? And this time it actually happened that I, when the bot had said, everyone's ready to up, starting in 10. And then nothing. <laughs> like, I never saw the five. For, I'm like, uh, and then OBS crapped out on me. I panically tried to get Discord on my phone so I could alert the restream team. Uh, but apparently, so uh, before we started the second seed, Pizza told me that the first one had a, well, we saw the Rosa start, but then had a Palum for the partner. And then the next one we do has Rosa with Kane, which pretty just as good. Then we got Palum anyway. So uh, at least the character side of things seemed fated tonight one way or the other. Well, um, except Edge. Yeah, just, Edge. Not, like his entire, uh, you know, weapon supply. Every, every, like, I think I found two Murasames and two Masamunes, and at that point I felt like the seed was just mocking me. I mean, if it wasn't, we were. We uh, were? That, that's a totally <laughs> different story. So, just warning you on the rewatch, way too many puns. Just warning you now. Oh, I'm excited for it. Uh, it, it I, I love it when you two are on comms together, so I'm sure it's going to be real enjoyable. 
Uh, I, I'm gonna feel a little awkward watching myself run all over the place. Like, we had one item left to find. Like, I did Dwarf Castle because I wanted a fifth character, and at that point, I just needed I just needed a pan. Where's a pan? Where's the pan? Uh, and yeah, after finishing the moon, I played the meta game a little bit. I told myself, well, look, if pizza went moon earlier than I did, then would have had to have chased the earth crystal I found. Why isn't he done yet? And then I thought, well, the rudest boss I've seen has to be that evil wall in Feymarch. Let's go there first. Went there. And of course you saw we got the the pass for killing it. Great. Hooray. Reset back. And then of course I found the Lukaki. I'm like, that has to be it. And uh, just followed that chain and never, never chased that earth crystal. So Moon's haunted. Yeah, was definitely haunted tonight. Um, luckily for us, uh, Sheila was hanging on to that uh, Legend Sword, so we still did get to see you 17 out of 17 this seed. Yay! <laughs> uh, another thing, by the way, that I, I... This is why that seed is a beautiful troll, and it is that Lunar Subterrain reward. Here, have an Avenger. First fight, Ruby. No, no, we want our ice weapon for Ruby. Next fight, Pain Man. Take the Avenger back off. <laughs> Just And then I didn't equip it going into the third fight, which was Antlion. As soon as you get the Avenger, it was three for three on bosses that punish you for going in wielding an Avenger. So that was a thing of beauty. That's my favorite thing about the seed, hands down. Yeah, the, the, the moon was not kind. That Rubicante boss is really what... Uh what the did keeps in. Had to do a couple of resets on that. It just was not. However, it did get us copious amounts of hashtag more leg. <laughs> you gotta have the leg. Oh, baby. Uh, but yeah, very glad that I found that blizzard spear. I don't even remember where I did. Like, oh, I think... It, oh, it was actually in the, the Tomra shed. Finally, Job Dwarf coming through, by the way. The, uh, I was considering not going there. I'm like, I'm already here looking for the curse ring. Let's be kind to everyone. And then I nearly faded that one chest because it looked like the job dwarf's partner was about to run down and block it. Uh, very fortuitous that that dwarf took a right instead of a left, letting me get that blizzard spear. Yeah, definitely worked out for you. Um, I, I don't remember Pizza actually cooking it for his Rubicante battle, and then also Rubicante decided to have a glaring contest with Palum, so he wasn't able to do much with that either. Mm. Uh, so uh, your Rubicante went a lot smoother, which definitely helped out, but also your your levels just sort of more played out, so you're much better equipped to go into that area. Uh, we do see the pan get there for Pizza. Still has to get the Magna Key, or the Magna Key from uh, Dwarven Castle, though. Yeah, when I got that, that was the one thing that made me feel a little better. I'm like, I could see the spot very easily being faded, especially when I went to Fey March after and found the Darkness Crystal. I'm like, okay, Dwarf Castle, very easy to forget in this circumstance because you're probably getting a fifth character anyway. So I, that was my little small bit of thankfulness. I'm like, okay, I could see an opponent overlooking that and getting punished for it. And based on what you're describing, it probably happened. Also, uh, you, you were talking about some nice trolls that the game threw at you. Uh, I would also have to say that, uh, for you specifically, uh, getting Tella there on the moon and then never needing to actually go and do the grind fight uh, to level. Uh, I was at I mean, nine... so great for the <laughs> anchor, but... Sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but that no. was the most frustrating thing. I was at nine key items, and let's see, I had Baron Key, I had Twin Harp still hanging. I had both spots in the Tower of Babel. Uh, or no, I was at eight. And then I got to nine from something in the, the Tower Earth of Crystal. Babel. Or, oh no, uh, Sand Ruby. Sand Ruby, Sand yeah, Ruby. Sand Ruby put me at nine. I'm like, okay, well let's do top down. Maybe Cave Bahamut will give me one. And then I can go do a, because a 10 key item D-Machine grind is like three and you're done. Like, it's just so fast. But the game's like, do you want a key item? Do you want a key item? And then the only one on the moon anyway was that Earth Crystal, which was bait. So, ah, beautiful seed death. This roll some more for these, uh, for for this Enterprise Eight quarterfinal round. Like, just that was that was a trip and a half. I loved it. We uh, we have some more grinding over here. Uh, we've got some door grinds happening. Uh, not the one you see too often anymore is the trap doors, but the 
that's happening. I mean, we have the 10 key items. It, it's a quick way to get those last few levels just to avoid a Marginals or Omas fight. I was tempted to, but e even Ogre Axe plus Avenger, I figured, okay, that's probably enough here. The, uh, just really didn't want to, uh, I, I didn't want to, I felt so far behind that I didn't want to, because I, likewise, hunting the 10th key item, I figured if, if Pizza does a D-Machine grind immediately, especially getting that Rydia to nuke, he's cleared the moon much faster than I have. If, uh, and then just coming back, I'm like, you know, I really need to just go for it. No more looting. Even could forge an Excal. Didn't want to spend the time doing that. I was like, no, we got to go. Yeah, uh, which uh, chat even even suggested that that might have been the case where you you just felt so behind at that point that you're you're not gonna worry about the XL. Yes, uh, Cecil would have probably done about twice as much damage as he was, but with Tell as your anchor, um, really all you have to hope for is that you just don't get a ridiculous roll against Rosa, and and you're pretty much home free. Yeah, and got very lucky, her with her 1900, the highest that she took a hit for was a, like, 1700 with, on one of them, and able to recover just fine from it, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Again, you never feel good when you're heading into a Zormus fight, having done 17 of 17, and having done every key item spot except for one, so, yeah, 33 of 34, 17 of 17, what a seed. Glad to walk away with the win after just how the sheer quantity that we had to complete on that one. Uh, absolutely, and uh, I mean, definitely best of luck going forward. But I, I, I'm sorry, I can't root for you in the second game because we all have to go for a third. I cannot argue with that. All these matches are spectacular. I'm hoping the same for all the other uh, three quadrants of the bracket. Give me game three, is everyone. Absolutely. T, do you have any other questions for uh, Invenerable here? Not really. I think we, we covered most of them. Well, in that case, thanks everyone on the restream. Thanks, Krim, TGE, Dathis, and Baka. Y'all are doing the work to actually put the show on. You're fantastic. Uh, I'm going to go eat a snack and have a beverage and watch this run back. Looking forward to the puns. Have a good night, y'all. Have a good one. Take care. He's not ready for the puns, is he? No one's ready for the puns. <laughs> Good news over on Pizza Side. While we were chatting with Inven, we found a pan, we smacked the gang, we returned to pan. The problem is we're kind of missing one key. And it looks like the tower check is going to be his next check, so uh, going to be a little bit longer before we find that back. Yeah, the only thing really here is that sand ruby, which at this point, uh, the only thing Sid would be good for is as an anchor, but you've got to tell us, so... So uh, we are going to be continuing our way up the tower here. Uh, we know it's just Dark Imps at the top and, and, and uh, Wyvern in the Super Cannon. Unfortunately, you know, not what we're going to need. So we are going to go ahead and end up uh, 34 of 34 and 17 of 17 in the whole nine yards here. The, the unfortunate thing here is we've only got Dark Imps and Wyvern, and we have no more leg bosses, so unfortunately I can't give you guys any more leg puns here, but there, we do have some Dark Imps, 
which uh, I'm just a good thing at this point is it's just a uh, let's kill them as fast as we can. We don't have to really worry about uh, getting more experience or any more experience. We, we've got all of that. Pal, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cast the stone on the dark imp. Just you know, easy peasy, no boss flag, no boss bit, no problem. Just hit the stone button, call it good. Uh, get our sand ruby here, and then make our way down to the super. Camp. Looks like uh, pizza wants to go and have an explosive to finish. I mean, when you're gonna mega nuke the super cannon, that's all you can ask for. That is a rather hot take on the situation. I mean, I, I've run out of most of the hot takes that, that I've had here. I mean, I, it's been two hours, 15 minutes of, of constant uh, bad puns and worse takes. Yeah, I can imagine you're going to have a few issues flare up now. You know it, but uh, there it is a quick and easy Wyvern down. Probably the, the happiest place to see Wyvern. You know you don't have to worry about it anymore. And, uh, there we I imagine that's going to go and be the uh, happiest fight Pizza's had for a while. Hey, you're probably one of the rudest bosses of the game. How about you stay down and don't do anything? I'm pretty sure anything is a happy fight compared to the Rubicon they had to deal with. Yeah, I imagine that fight uh, burns a little bit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's still a little, a little singeing happening. Pizza had his eye on the that prize, but uh, Rubicon really wanted to go and shoot him down. Yep, just the, the glaring wouldn't stop, but uh, we're gonna have a uh, we're gonna have to bridge the gap here a little bit as we make our way out of the tower. I don't think our runners really stare to go and fix that bridge that gap. No, not at all. But uh, we have our forty fifth edge sword, and uh, we now are making our way over to Dwarf Castle, which, as we know, is the spot we need to be at to get the magma key. And a Cecil. And, yeah, this has been a scene. Poor Pizza, going in last location in Dwarf Castle, it never feels good. It's, uh, it's never the high percentage play when you just need a key item, so it's easy to fade, especially when you have those moon levels, but, uh, I imagine this stings a bit, too. Yeah, this is, this just has to be one of those feelings where it's just like, uh because it's it's a fairly easy spot, especially you know with just the, the Kaipo guards here, and but it's just like, oh, you feel bad. At the same time, it's like the percentages, the numbers didn't make sense. Yeah, two bosses, cutscenes, and why would you come here? This is just one key item check. You could, you don't need bosses. You don't need characters either. I guess uh, that Cecil might have been helpful earlier on, but we managed to go and acquire Cecil through Baron, so. And yeah, I mean, when... at this point, we have an Avenger sword, we just, you know, let this play out and call it good. Yeah, it looks like uh, Pizza's just gonna soldier on through this fight. And, uh, I believe we had the dolls next. No, I believe the dolls are at the Paladin spot. Oh, this the, is the, the Mega the, Sisters. Sisters, that's right. Still a lot, of, still a lot of overworlds. I mean, they're pretty dolled up, so easy to confuse them. Yeah, I mean, I've already, I've already made a horrible reference to their bug sprites in Final Fantasy X, so I'll do that again. And we're already down to Mindy. And it's not even been a minute. And Elizabeth and Cindy are off, too. 
Although I'm pretty sure we're less sandy and more salty after this scene. On that, I am not going to disagree. <laughs> But we really got to hand it to Pizza. He is going and pulling this off. He's uh, not going and staying down for the count. He's getting back up and pushing onwards. No better way, way to be than hands on. I mean, he seems pretty hands off with how he's letting Cecil do everything. But uh, this is going to be the magma key, and we're going to uh, go full on LA later, go down the hall, and uh, then we'll be on our way. I am curious if uh, Pizza decides to go and grab that Excalibur, because it's there, you can go and take it. It's really not going to cost you anything at that point, and it will go and dramatically increase your DPS. I mean, at this point, you, you know you've already lost the seed. Why not make things a little easier? I would, but then I'm also horrible at this game, so... I would, but I like to go and have the big shiny stuff, and Pizza does apparently not like to go and have the big shiny stuff. I mean, I'm all down with big shiny stuff. It's even got the cool sound effect. Ooh. Well, that's, uh... I'm sure Pizza never wants to go and talk about that moment again. Yeah, I don't think anyone wants to. Judging by the puns earlier tonight, I don't think that's an uncommon opinion. <laughs> well, since the match you were going to call got postponed, we had to up the ante and make sure everyone got the full complement of puns that they were promised today. So, And I'm sure someone appreciates you pulling double duty. I'm sure it's also just not the viewers who appreciate it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we're going to go ahead and uh, write a choke. Gotta love the chocobo to uh, Troya because the falcon's in the way. It is the extra insult to injury, which is... Uh, that's a seed. Yeah, that, that, that has been the seed. the only way to, to describe it. We've got ourselves equipped, we've got the Gun Gear Spear, we've got an Avenger. Uh, just a matter of time before we uh, go and take on uh, Wannabe Jay Leno. Yeah, this has been a real nightmare for, for pizza and it's not over yet. At least we don't have to take the long walk we did find ourselves to pass. Yeah, that is at least some reprieve in this uh, long slog of a siege. I mean, slog is the only way to put this. This siege, it started off so promising, you know. You had the one boss hunt, you found Odin early, and then it was just, a, oh, hey, just a couple of key out. Yeah, no. It's just two KMs. How hard could it be to find? Well, One D eight checks later. Or we go full SpongeBob two weeks later. Speaking of that, is there a SpongeBob miss? If there is, you'd have to ask Scala because I wouldn't recognize most of them. Yeah, that, that's fair. I mean I don't recognize half the things we see anyway. I just know the art and the sprite work is amazing. Scala is very good at going and bringing things in or uh, making sprites if she needs to. Yeah, but uh, here is Nightmare Must 2. And then now it's just a matter of setting up the Berserker strats, some reflex if we're going to do that, and we're good. Ah, uh, Scala going and pointing out that Plankton is. Uh in the seeds and is uh, in the pool so I'm 
might have seen it at some point, but um, I sympathize with Squidward in that from what I saw of that show, so I'm not exactly the best person to ask. SpongeBob is an interesting, an interesting cat for me because I'm at the age where I was never, I wasn't young enough for when SpongeBob really came out. I'm a little too old for that. But my sister watched it, and I've only ever seen like catch like random episodes of SpongeBob when she's watching when she was watching it. I've only ever seen the same episode four times. If it's SpongeBob annoying Squidward, that's uh, kind of all the episodes. No, no, it's it's the thankfully it's one of the episodes where they go full on innuendo, but uh, that's where we're gonna leave it because you know that sounds incredibly fair. Meanwhile, pizza going and taking the first... Ooh, that's mean. That that just seems like a low blow here. A big bang into HP ran out on Tella because it left him at 2 HP. Wouldn't go and finish the job itself. Had to go and be the extra slap in the face. I mean, the way this seat's been going, that's what you have to expect. And uh, even more so of a slap in the face. Didn't quite get the levels up to get Duke on Quake Kids, so we're having to, uh, unfortunately, resort to Fire 3. Yeah, I don't think Palm is going to be long for this fight. I think it's going to quickly turn into uh, what we saw with Inventable with the Baron Power Trio going and soldiering on and getting through this fight on just <laughs> Rosa healing them up and the other two going and staying angry. I mean, you can't ask for much more than that. Angry Paladin, Angry Dragoon, and White Mage be like, yeah, I'm Wonder Woman, I'm gonna keep you guys all set, you'll be good. Yeah, though, uh, the wall on Rosa might make things a bit dangerous because Rosa is not gonna be able to get healed, and it's very likely she's... both uh, Rosa and Palom are gonna go down in this next big thing. And then we're just on... Um... Set your controller down and walk away. Well, the, a black hole might come up, which would go and let him save this uh, attempt, but it would be a rather ugly recovery. Yeah, it, it absolutely would be. Now, instead of reflecting fire threes, we're reflecting viruses. He's probably expecting Palom to go and uh, survive long enough to cast another fire three, so just... Well, it looks like we got a refill skip, so or not a refill skip, a HP refill in general. So that uh, that big bang's gonna be hit even harder. So maybe it'd be worthwhile to go and throw a cure two with Callum to try and get Rosa up. Yeah, gonna be interesting to see the uh, the damage range on that. Yeah, that's uh. After the refill, there's a difference in rolls between Big Bangs, where there's a high roll and a ooh, ooh. not going and killing Rosa. That's that's impressive. That so, is had the life potion ready to go and everything. There's a difference between Big Bangs because there's these things called um, well, magic power goes and effectively gets rolls like dice for um, their spells. So you go and if you have this much spell power, you go and roll 1 to 400 four times or three times. Here I believe it's th 1 to 300 and it gets rolled eight times or nine times. And after the refill it is nine times by default because of how the script works. So Rosa not going down to that means that she went and dodged several rolls of the Big Bang. To dodge rolls you need to have a rather high uh, wisdom or willpower stat. Ooh. And then Rose is taking the nuke to the face, which is very unkind, and still not going down because wow. Rosa is a true champ. Rosa is Wonder Woman. Taking the clothes seriously here. And, uh, I know they say the clothes make the man, but the clothes are making the woman here. Rosa just absolutely being a hero. Yeah, Rosa is uh, not going down. Rosa is really going and staying up well beyond what I was expecting. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't complain about that. Rosa just absolutely, you know, making sure, like, Rosa's had enough to see just like everybody else has had enough to see. <laughs> Rosa
just as had to go live through all of this. And speaking of living through this, we've got rocks. We're at the final part of the seed. Which is probably the happiest rocks I think anyone has seen in a long time. And speaking of rocks, we see Nightmare is rocking back and forth as he falls down to the end as Pizza finishes with an official time of 2 hours, 27 minutes, and 46 seconds. Congratulations, Pizza. He has declined an interview, so that will be the end of this broadcast. How are you? How did you feel about all of this, if, as if you haven't had the chance to say it already? <laughs> well, I'm a giant fan of Schadenfreude, so I loved every minute of this. And I'm sure Pizza and Indian Venerable would love to go and see your suffering. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So uh, that is going to be uh, it for us here tonight on Free Enterprise. So, uh, well, we're going to do a little sign off. Normally, we would be sending you to some more Free Enterprise or more Final Fantasy IV, but there's kind of a new game or a remake game coming out soon, so people are playing the old version of that. So we're going to send people to some Final Fantasy VII. Are you cool with that? That sounds pretty good to me. Seems like it's a good way to uh, refresh yourself on what uh, might be getting changed a little bit. So let's go and uh, send our love to Radio Hupfin, who's also a commentator for Free Enterprise, and uh, let her know what a great race that she missed, or they missed, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, before we go there real quick, just a reminder, thanks to our restream team behind the scenes, that would be Dathis doing the restreaming. Uh, Baka here, mostly doing the button pushing, but joining me in for the last bit because uh, Krim did have to jump out. Of course, Krim's now is my partner for most of the Cena and, of course, TGE. So, uh, shout out to all of them, most of the other people, not me. I mean, shout out me. But uh, with that, uh, let's make our way over to some Final Fantasy VII. Have a great evening. And keep hailing.